what's up y'all my name is eric jordan i'm anthony sellers and this is browns, browns in our blood. blood what were your thoughts on the detroit game you ever been mad at a friend or, or a child like when i see them i'm gonna let them have it i'm gonna really get in their butt when i see them and then pause ever been mad at a loved one a friend or someone and you know, he's like, when I see them, boy, I'm gonna let them have it. I'm just gonna let them have it. And then when you see them, they take complete accountability for their actions. And you're like, well, he owned up to it, you know? He owned up to it. That's kind of how I feel about Hugh Jackson right now. I was extremely pissed. I was, I, and you know what? And after, in hindsight, because in real time, Watching the watching the game versus Detroit, it was so close, and we were so close to winning. And then we yeah. ooped up again. I was so I was just like it was the last straw for me. But then you know a couple of days later, like today, you know, and I saw the press conference with, with you. When I saw a press conference, especially about the halftime, the the play calling before halftime, that really had me pissed off. You know, while we running the ball, got no timeouts. 15 seconds left on the clock. This makes no damn sense. Yeah. Um, but he, he, Hugh looked dead at me. And I, I'm, he didn't look at the reporters. He didn't look at the camera. He looked dead at me. Hugh Jackson <laughs> looked dead at me and said, it's on me. It's my fault. No, don't even give it to the young. That's my fault. Whether he called the audible or not, I'm coaching him. So it's still on me. Man, that kind of stuff does something for me. That kind of stuff does something for me. I, it's an emotional roller coaster with Hugh and these yeah. damn Browns. <laughs> The other thing about it too is uh, Deshaun on his interview, not not at, right after the game, but yesterday or today, whenever it was, his interview was the same way. He's like, well, he took he's taking ownership for it, but I'm the one out there trying to execute since the office is running through, basically through me. Uh, he took part of responsibility for it too, basically. Yeah. So yeah, you got to respect that. You can't do yeah, nothing but respect that. We're all on the same page. That's yeah, the they, exactly. Like, but that they were on the same page with it. Right, and and. It makes you feel like, you know what, hey, you know, give them a little more time. That's kind of like where I was at. Because I'm telling you, Sunday, I was pissed off. I mean, because we were so close to winning. And then what the other way of looking at that, too, is I was so pumped up because we were so close to winning, meaning we were playing better. We were playing better. I go back and look at the film, and we played pretty good. Yeah, we played really good. We played pretty damn good. I think it's actually the best game of the year. The, it was. The, it yeah. Was, yeah, you know. Our defense show up like it usually do. Usually do. We win that game. I think Detroit's I, a hard offense, though. That's even. Like, they're such a good yeah. offense. They're hard to stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stafford. I mean, you know, people don't give it to him, but Stafford's that dude. I mean, he is the yeah. highest paid QB in the league, but he is that. He he's also that dude. He's paid because he's he's that dude. What I did like about the game, I thought, you know, I've been preaching this. Run that ball, big boy. You saw what Watson was doing. To me, it opened up so many different aspects of the game. The running game got took off. It brings up the morale of the team. They go try to make extra plays now, you know, and they just can't, they just can't, you know, concentrate on one focus of the game because you two are predictable, guys. So, you know, when him running the ball, you know, uh, and I'm not just talking about design runs, I'm talking about, you know, play. Scrambling. Scrambling, yeah. yeah. And then, I was, right. was going to say, because the first half, there was only really one designed QB run. He was trying to, to me, prove that he was a pocket passer. I'm like, dude, man, use them legs, man. It's a gift. Look at Cam. Look at look at look at watching before he got hurt. You know what I'm saying? Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. You yeah. know, and you got that frame, and he showed it, and it looked good. And then the defense didn't know what to do. So what happens? No plays for Crow pop up. You know what I'm saying? Oh my God, Kenny Brick shows up. Kenny man, Brick shows he took, up. He took my thunder. I was gonna sit there and say <laughs> there was a Brick sighting in Detroit. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> took my thunder on me there. Come on, as bad as I've been, as bad as, I, as bad as I've been. Uh, yes, and coach, and coach shows up. <laughs> I was yeah. really impressed the way they came out in the second half. The way they came out in the second half was very impressive. Takes a lot they of needed, heart. They needed that after the yeah. blunder of the first half. Yeah. Uh, how the first half ended, they needed that that first drive on the second half. Yeah, that was that was extremely impressive. Yeah. Extremely impressive. I think the morale went out when Kaiser got hurt. When he got hurt, when he went out, I felt I think they felt like, oh, here we go again. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what I thought. Right. Yeah, Joku's got to get that block. Yeah. But that <laughs> was a hell. He's got to get that block. And I'm sorry. You got to give him that catch. <laughs> you got to give him that catch. I don't know. Depending on how you look at it. I mean, 
It could look like he didn't get that second foot in. It could look like that oh, toe no. tapped a little bit. I don't know. It tapped a little bit before. It was too close to call. But it was a hell of a catch. It was a hell it of was. a catch. It was, yeah. Yeah. The boys came to play last last week. No, I, at first, like I said, real time, during the game, I was emotional. In hindsight, I saw it all, it was all about, I was I was emotional because we were so close to winning and we were so close to winning because they played good. What do you think about the Detroit game? I liked it a lot. I mean, you pretty much hit pretty much all of it on the head. I mean, uh, it was a good game. The, the running game was there. Right. They didn't really, I don't think they abandoned the running game until they absolutely had to. Right. And I, I'm still reading on some Facebook forums where they're saying that the running game is being like still being abandoned that they're still throwing too much on it but i really don't think they did i think everything went to complement each other well in this game and they really didn't abandon the run until they absolutely had to yeah i mean just from what i watched and what i saw and you know what this run game this week made me re um not realize but reestablished for me was pro that dude yeah pro we, we really got a good running back y'all he just ain't got the support i know it's hard to see that with the, with the, especially the way they was hyping up the offensive line. But dude, if everybody know what you're gonna do. You know, the offensive line is playing well though, I think. Well, I'm just saying, yeah. the, I'm not saying they're not playing bad, but I'm just saying the way the offensive line was in like preseason, the early in the season. How they were built. They were building built. us up like yeah. we had a Cowboys offensive line. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, they, I see what you're saying. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And they expected Rope Crow to have, and I expect the Crow to have this amazing year. But basically, I think the offensive line, like any other unit, just needs time to gel. There were drives, too, though, with the offense. I think they shot themselves in the foot. That was the third drive, they had two holding penalties in a row, mm. which basically killed that drive. I put them at, like, a first and 17 or something like that. And it was just, it killed, absolutely killed their momentum for that drive. And they ended up not getting any points out of it. First two drives, they had short fields. They capitalized like they were supposed to. Right. I liked overall. I liked what they did. It was a, game, a good game to watch because we were in it the whole way. I'm tired of the bashing. Stop bashing Kaiser. Stop bashing the. Stop bashing the front office. Stop bashing the coach. Stop bashing oh, hold Kaiser. Hold, 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 Just stop bashing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold, hold up, that damn front office, y'all. I ain't no look, 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 look. I don't know, man. Yeah, but see, what's done is done. Past is past. What's yeah, but that don't done, mean so. we got to keep going with them, though. We can't let the same people keep no, making the saying, same mistakes. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, you know, it's done with. Stop bashing about it. Stop living in the past. Look towards what's happening in the future. There's no way we're going winless this year. In my mind, especially the way we played last game, we're not going winless. We're, going, we're not going to go 0-16. I don't think we're you know? winning this weekend, but it's coming. <laughs> I think this weekend actually presents an interesting matchup, but we'll get into that. We'll get into later. that, yeah. yeah. I know what you're thinking, yeah, too. Yeah. I do know what you're thinking, and you might be right. <laughs> you might be right. We're getting into that later. Real quick on the Kaiser thing, because I want to give a shout out to my, my um, brother-in-law, Jerome, because last year when I was pushing Watson, no, this year when I was pushing Watson, and he was like, Kaiser, Kaiser, Kaiser. And I've been messing with him all season long. Yeah, right, Kaiser. You was the one that wanted Kaiser. You was the one that wanted Kaiser looked like, Kaiser looked pretty good this week. Like, the last two games he really has, honestly. Yeah, I was like, I was like, you know, it might just be a slow development, but this kid is, he's learning. Yeah. He's definitely you can learning. You see it. You can yeah. see it. Yeah. You can see it. That pass to, um, the pass to coach, that pass to Bob, those are some tight windows. Those are some really good throws. Yeah. And then he, he hit Lewis right on the hands on one that he oh, dropped. Yeah. And it looked like the, uh, I think it was Slay had his, his left hand on Lewis's right hand. Right. And. Yeah, you, know, you probably could have caught pass interference on, but it was concealed well. The way the bodies were, it was really, really concealed well. He, sh he probably still should have caught that. That was a dime that was dropped in there too. Yeah, I, I'm impressed with that. I'm impressed with that. And and if he's gonna run the ball like he's running it, he might. He might be that guy. And I will tell you what, I don't see nothing coming out of college this year that that's jumping at me better than him. You're talking about Baker's Mayfield. Yeah. I'm not sure if I want Mayfield over Kaiser. I mean, the developmental Kaiser. Kaiser keeps going in the right direction. And he's also uh, tuning out the outside distractions with like the media and things like that because they asked him about what LeBron James said, saying Watson should be the Browns quarterback and all that. And he's like, well, that's not me, so but next thing. <laughs> right. Like, he's just, Kaiser's really just kind of tuning all that negative out. And it seems like him and Hugh got a good relationship. Yeah. And it's like Hugh was really got on point with that kind of stuff. All right, I'm yeah. back on the Hugh Jackson train. I know I flip flop, but I'm back. All it took was a, a post game interview. I'm a, I'm, 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 a, I'm that kind of guy. I'm that kind of guy. I just, I just, I just yeah. little things like that go a long way. I, I stay steady on the line. You'll just. <laughs>
makes it entertaining to watch, it right? It does, it does. <laughs> I'll give you that. Impact the Jamie Collins injury. We have depth on the defense mm -hmm. and then the linebackers. So I'm wondering, like... Who's going to take a spot? Who's, who's uh, Burgess. Burgess. Yeah. Burgess is taking a spot, which he went out for a couple plays with an injury lot during the Detroit game, but I forget what it was. I don't know if it was major or not, but I don't know. I just, I like the way the defense plays. Like they have, they have depth along the front seven. Just, I don't think it's going to be as big as an impact as what it would be with like some kind of, you know, like Joe Thomas leaving. Mm -hmm. But you might be right. I do believe in Craig Williams. I do have trust in I mean, the and, linebackers and are playing. GW. A lot of the linebackers are playing great though. Like yeah. Schobert, Kirksey, Collins is playing great. Burgess has been, been doing well when he played. This one's more for you. Okay. That's just that. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Part of it <laughs> is more for you. Okay. Josh Gordon being reinstated and the return of Corey Coleman. <laughs> Boy, I mean, you just saw what it looked like this week. Man, do you imagine them coming in? That boy breaks out. To, he goes in the back. He breaks out. Does a little move like he did this weekend. And they come in and that. And you got both them boys flying down it. Man, I want to see it. 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 <laughs> I, I, I'm pumped up for it. I saw Josh in the interviews. And I like his demeanor. I like the way he's not falling for the bait. These reporters trying to get him. You know me, man. I've been on the Josh fan. I think I'm the president yep. of the fan club, actually. So, you know, <laughs> Corey Coleman. I think he's good for four games before he get hurt again. We get Corey Coleman four games a season. But, hey, as long as he'll produce. I mean, think about it, though. If Crow's running... If Crow's running like they did, and Duke played good last week too. I mean, if our running game's going the way it's going, if the, if, if the Rook plays like he played last week, you know, those two guys? That's actually, it turns into a really, really stacked group, position group. Because, especially, especially ah, if... He's just the ruler of the universe. <laughs> that's Flash Gordon to John, though. If, uh, <laughs> if, uh, shit, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Because think about it, Coleman's been the only one with consistent hands. If Britt starts catching like he did this last game and becomes a little bit of a factor with Coleman, Britt, Gordon, as long as Gordon shows up like he did 2014, 2013, things like that, right? You know, which might take a, take a couple games, but if he gets that rust off and does that, and then you have Coates who just acts as a fourth, then you got a real potent group in my opinion. I agree. So I tell you, I, I was I mean, thinking uh, when I saw Britt catch that pass, I said, that ain't number Josh Gordon practice. Somebody stepping up. Somebody see it coming yeah. down the line. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is ironic that the first game after the reinstatement comes. Yeah, he, yeah. Play, he played a little extra. Yeah. Played a little extra. A little more effort. Flash. Yeah. <laughs> ah, he so yeah, I think... the ruler of the universe. <laughs> All right, tell me what you think of this Mike Singletary talk. I don't like it. Because <laughs> I'm staying with you. I oh. stayed on it. Singletary comes, that takes me off. You know, it, it kind of helps push off. I don't what know. A, I don't, what if it's a four assistant position? For what side? For uh, defense, defense or offense? Defense. Defense. Then well, not, not taking Greg's position. Well, like yeah, just, yeah. just an assistant to the, To Greg. Yeah, yeah. then I, w I mean, I wouldn't be for be against that. Right. I'm, so, think, I'm, I'm thinking that's all it is. I'm hoping that's all it is because, you know, just given the dynamics of the team and how the media wants to portray it, it makes it a bigger impact than what it should be. It's a bigger distraction than what it needs to be. Right, right. So. Yeah, we are really like the pun of every joke. Yeah. I mean, it's, it don't even have to be football related no more. It just needs to be, you know, like yep. if you want to say something funny, it's like, you know, hey, I went to see my wife yesterday. And the Browns. Ha! Ah! I'm not even considering they're talking about head coach. I just, you know, I won't even go there. No. I won't even go there. But let's say they do take him as head. They think about him as head coach. No. 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 No, 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 no. Uh-uh. He's too emotional. What he said. Uh-uh. I could know. That dude would drive me crazy. <laughs> uh-uh. And believe me, I love Mike Singletary as a player. I love him. But Mike Singletary as coach? Nope. Can't do it. Won't do it. Won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Keys to beating Jacksonville. First, I can't, I first, can't. first things first, though, just, you know, come on. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull a Fournette. Come on. <laughs> Man, y'all better lay him on his butt if he do yeah. that to us. He's going to try to do it, too. Yeah, Gibson, too. Gibson, like, you, you read that article? Yeah, I did. I hope we kicked their ass just for that. 
man. Like they're, they're hot right now, man. Yeah, yeah, but Gibson don't need to be talking about. No, nah, don't 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 need to be talking that ish. We I hope he kicked our ass just for that. I mean, but there's some truth to what he said, though. There's some truth to what yeah, he said I about, mean, about the organization, the other, how this dysfunctional it is. Granted, that's true. Or maybe it was when he was there. That's yeah, because this is a different front office than what he dealt with. Yeah, and for the record, I'm letting Hugh off the off the um hook, but I ain't letting this front office off the hook. I'm I'm sorry, y'all still can't evaluate talent. Y'all still let some, you know, I can't even say good players, franchise players slip through our fingers. I, I I don't I don't think you get a pass on that. Front office, y'all got to go. Y'all gotta go <laughs> now. This Jacksonville thing, defensively, they are spooky. I got them early. Third week of fantasy, I won't let them go. I won't let them go. They give me points. They don't just stop. They score. They'll be a good test, I tell you that. Yeah, and then it I is it's a good test. I think it both like this matchup sets up really well for both teams. They have the best run game, run offense. Mm. We have one of the top run defenses. If we can stop their run, yeah. their passing game is not good. True. Me and my dad were talking about this. It's gonna be a uh, an old school game. Yeah. Old school, like 70s, Defense. 80s games. Defense. Defense and Defense. pound the ball. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Old style, and it's going to be it's gonna be fun to watch, honestly. You said it yeah. might come down to the field goal kickers. Yep. That's all I got on Jacksonville. I, I'm, honestly, I'm a little spooky. He thinks we're going to win. I, I, I think we're going to win every game, though. <laughs> I got I to gotta keep that. Got to keep that positive. <laughs> Positivity. No, so. I hit that. I hit that wall. <laughs> I was there for the first five. I was with him the first five. Did it back to life, back to reality. <laughs> no. So what's going on with FanDuel, man? Who who's FanDuel. winning? All I know is I suck in fantasy. Period. Except for one. <laughs> Except for one. How you doing, Gary? In which league, though? Well, we tied. That's what I'm saying. He won yeah, one. He... I won one. Well, which one do you view as more important? Don't matter. <laughs> Don't matter. You know why? Because I'm five and five in both damn leagues. <laughs> I lied. There is one I am really like. If I had to, if I had to choose which league meant to, which one meant the most to me, it would definitely be Gridiron Conglomerate. Gridiron Conglomerate. I think that's the one he beat you in, though. Yeah, it is the one he beat me in. Uh -huh. It is the one. It is the one he beat me in. But that's probably the one that would mean the most to yeah. me. But that whole league. I got revenge factor on from last week. <laughs> so like, Cause it's the most trash talking league I'm in. There's not a more trash no, talking league than Grid Iron Com Man, they bring uh, it. Fandle, top total scores right now is Kellen. Then it's you. How's that? How is that? I That's got the overall for the whole season. But I'm saying I've been losing like crazy. So He's I got I can still win this whole thing with He's, the points. You can still win with total points, yes. Hey, but Hyphen got a hundred more points than me. My whole FanDuel experience last week was terrible. The only thing I had going was this 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 head to head matchup with Gary Wolf from off your um fantasy fantasy football bosses podcast. I don't know if any of y'all guys are friends, but we had a little video tag going back and forth, which I had, which that I true that was funny to watch, and I truly enjoyed it. <laughs> I truly enjoyed it. it. It really made watching the games yesterday fun. But a little stressful. But yeah, me and Gary Wolf, his his co-host on Fantasy Football Bosses, we we always talk trash to each other for the last few years. Just by coincidence, this last Sunday we went head to head in two different leagues, and you know, fantasy football is about bragging rights. So we went at it, but we we split. He won one, and I won one. Even though the one he won, he he he. It was a, <laughs> you want that to be the tiebreaker? <laughs> No, that's not the tiebreaker. Total points between no, both leagues, no, tiebreaker. No, 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 no. It's W and L's, baby. It's W and L's. W and L's. Speaking of fantasy football bosses, make sure you check them out every Thursday. Yes. Every Thursday, you can catch them on iTunes, Mixcloud. If you like the show, Browns in Our Blood, you can catch us on YouTube at Mustard Lung Sound Vision. Be sure to like the videos, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know how we're doing. Yeah. You can also find the show in podcast form on iTunes, Stitcher. Well, yo, that's going to do it for us this week, y'all. We're going to catch y'all next week. My name's Eric Jordan. I'm not Eric Jordan. That's Anthony Sellers. And this is Browns, Browns in Our Blood. Blood. Let's get this win. It's going to be hard when we get Jacksonville. Yeah. But they're coming to the cold. Florida boys don't know how to deal with this. <laughs> Here we go, Brownies. Here we go. Ooh, ooh.